And we're rounding out request week here at Till We Make It. What do you do when you discover there's another professional wrestler out there with the same name as you? I'm Mike Quackenbush, this is Till We Make It, and I want to cover this odd circumstance. What would happen if, after creating a name and a persona for yourself, you discover there's another professional wrestler, maybe nearby or maybe from the other side of the planet, who has the same gimmick or same ring name as you? Well, I happen to have a couple thoughts about this, which I will share with you now here on my YouTube channel, Till We Make It. Here is number one. If you discover there's another professional wrestler, whose name is spelled exactly the same as yours, or is one letter different. Your name is Bob Steele, and they write theirs with the E on the end of Steele. These are too similar. Go about changing your name. And I know that sounds painful, right? How are you ever going to find another 134 Twitter followers? But you will. But you want to get away from that for a couple reasons. Here's one of them. Anytime somebody attempts to search for you, chances are about 50% of the time they're going to find the other wrestler. And that means half of your potential audience, just by the circumstance of having such a similar name, could end up following and engaging with the wrong performer. And especially when you are starting out, you don't want to do anything that could handicap your ability to attract a new audience to all the hard work that you're doing. Now, you might recall not long before I had my IPL treatment, we made a video about social media, specifically mystique and responsible transparency. And I am pointing to the link above. And one of the topics I think I should have spent a little more time on, I want to address here, which is about moves on social media that can reduce your potential audience. And I did touch on it in that video when I said this. I think your pro wrestling character has no political affiliation and does not express any religious views because politics and religion are extremely polarizing topics. And unless you are comfortable saying, I am willing to ignore or potentially offend a giant segment of my potential fan base for the sake of being able to give voice to this opinion as my public facing persona instead of as my private identity, I think you're making a huge mistake. You don't want to do anything that could potentially diminish the audience that's going to support your pro wrestling career because you, the performer that plays this character, happens to espouse certain views, be them political or religious. And similarly, when you have a name like that, that is so similar to another existing pro wrestler, if you fail to change it to a degree, you are going to sacrifice some of your potential audience because when they go about Google searching for you, they're going to end up finding that other performer at least part of the time. And I think you've also got to think bigger than just the world of professional wrestling. And here's a great example. The pro wrestler Mitch Ryder, for a period of his career, spelled his name exactly the same as the band leader of the Detroit Wheels, a rock and roll group that got popular in the 1960s. And if you go on Google right now and attempt to find anything about Mitch Ryder the wrestler, you're going to have to go through four pages of results about Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels before you find anything about him whatsoever. And if you know how people tend to go through Google search results and give up, the idea that you're all the way down on page four is like a death knell for your career. So I want to encourage you, if you come across someone whose name is identical or very similar in spelling to yours, just go about changing it. You're going to have such better odds for success managing that brand if you do not have somebody else potentially encroaching on your market share. I have another point I want to make about naming conventions, and it's this. Local names get you local work, full stop. So, let's say as your ring name, you choose to be the Prince of Pittsburgh. Where is that going to be relevant and help your career advancement? Well, maybe in Pittsburgh itself, Maybe right across the Ohio border, where there's some town I'm sure imagines Pittsburgh is their rival, or one of the cities that has a sports team that is the rival of Pittsburgh. This is me feigning knowledge of legitimate sport. You and I know it's passe. So let me reiterate that one more time. Local names get you local work, 
Full stop. Do not limit your career trajectory by choosing for yourself something that delimits the region in which your character is relevant. If you happen to be in a position where you realize you are going to have to change your character's name, do some due diligence on social media before committing to a new moniker. Make sure there is memorable and easy to find social media channels and platforms where the name you are about to take on is available. You don't want something that is impossible for promoters to remember because they're never going to tag you when they're making the relevant posts, and it's gonna be that much harder for fans to feel certain they found the right person. If they do, make it through all those Google search results and actually land on your social media. I'm gonna call out on the floor two trends that I've observed in naming conventions of professional wrestlers. One is very relevant now, and one from maybe a generation ago, but it contains a lesson we can all learn from. Number one, people tend to favor the letters Z, X, and Q because they think they are memorable, and I don't wanna fool you. That is part of why I chose the stage name I did 26 years ago. I thought it would be relevant. But now there is a glut of names that use the letters Z, X, and Q. In fact, there's a wrestling organization which has national television exposure. And the last time I looked at their roster, they had five different people on it with the letter X in their name. That's the best game of Scrabble anybody has ever played. It just does not occur that frequently in the real world. Relevant to the discussion of unusual letters in the names of companies and products to make them very memorable, a study was done more than half a century ago that shows consumers are most likely to actually pay attention to the letter K, not Z, not Q, and not X. And you can see that theme running through a bunch of companies that I'm sure we could name off the top of our head, Keebler, Kellogg's, uh, Kimberly Price, Kaiser Industries, etc and also relevant products, especially ones that could have crunch or crackle or things like that, easily spelled with the letter C, changed to the letter K to make them stand out in a crowded marketplace. That can also help you to stand out in the crowded marketplace of professional wrestling. And my second point about this is something that we loved to poke fun at here at Chikara more than 10 years ago, which was this gigantic influx of exceptionally generic sounding wrestler names that included things like Steel, Storm, and Dragon. So if you are at all familiar with your Chikara history, you know we have a Lance Steel, we have a Shane Storm, and we have a Dragon Dragon. And each of these was specifically picked as a bit of a very good-natured ribbing on these ultra-common names. Because there absolutely was also a Shane Steel, and I'm sure, and of course, there's a Lance Storm now that I'm saying it out loud. And there were all these dragons that you could think of. There was an insane dragon, there was a green dragon, there was a red dragon, there was a suicidal dragon, there was a super dragon, there was an American dragon, there was an Ultimo dragon, there was a black dragon, there was a dragon kid, there was a glut of dragons. We had so many dragons, and you know what was true? None of them were real dragons, except for ours. So even though we wanted to poke fun at this trend back in the day, the truth is these trends evolve over time, and no doubt there is a glut of some other kind of naming convention going on right now in professional wrestling. And all you really need to do is read the active rosters of a couple different wrestling organizations, and I'm sure that trend is going to stick out to you. Do your best to buck those trends so that your name ends up being unique. And if after hearing all this, you think to yourself, Mike, I am going to have to come up with a brand new character. I'm going to have to invent a new name. I'll need a new differentiating value proposition. I might need a new nickname as well. Where do I begin? I am so glad you asked. Seven Keys to Becoming a Better Performer, a book I wrote for fellow pro wrestlers, has an entire chapter dedicated to crafting this for maximum efficacy. It's going to make you unique while adding value to what you do in the crowded marketplace that is professional wrestling.